And well, welcome everyone to another exciting edition of the Magic Sandwich Show. And it is going to be a very exciting edition, I can say with some degree of confidence, because we have two special guests who are joining us from Sweden, um, Rolf uh, Lamper and Samuel Lamper. And given the same surname, you can imagine that they may well be uh, related, and indeed they are. We have uh, Father Rolf and son Samuel. Rolf is the chairman of the Swedish Creationist Association. Um, Samuel, Samuel is uh, also a uh, member of that association. Uh, and as you can tell by its name, uh, it has a similar sort of uh, connotation to creationism in America, but we're going to deal with that uh, in more detail. I also want to point out that it's, we are often criticized for getting uh, religious people on the show and outnumbering them. Well, as you can see on this occasion, concordance um, in, in real life, non-dinosaur, uh, will be um, holding the side up for the Magic Sandwich show. Um, so no one can criticize us for outnumbering the uh, believers um, on this occasion. Uh, Rolf, welcome to the show. A great pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. I'm very likewise, uh, honored to be invited. Thank you. Thank and you. likewise, Thank Samuel, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, what I thought we would do to start with um, is briefly talk about the religious position in Sweden, then go into perhaps a little bit more detail about your particular beliefs, uh, and then deal with some of the issues as to how those relate to the contents of the Bible. Uh, Rolf, perhaps I can start with you. Um, the majority of our audience comes from America and um, elsewhere around the world, but the majority of America, I suspect most are are uh, going to be unfamiliar with the religious position in uh, Sweden. Perhaps you could just begin by giving us a, a, a bit of a background in, in relation to that. Yeah, um, uh, Sweden used to be, uh, uh, as most European countries, a Catholic country, and then in the 15th century, I believe, uh, we turned uh, Protestant. And uh, it was the king by the initiative of the king, so it became a state church and has been since. And we only recently left the, the state as the head of the church. And, uh, uh, well, um, the content of, of, of uh, uh, the, the, the church, the message, uh, well, it's the old Lutheran uh, theology. And... Um, it has uh, today. It's it's uh, it's changing like everywhere else. Uh, the Swedish people don't go to church. That's the short version. They don't. Uh, you go to to a, visit a church and you see uh, three or four old ladies there. That's the typical. Uh, yeah. Well, that's it. Now, are, you, are you able to put a uh, figure on the percentage of atheists in Sweden? Because it was my understanding that um, that was the majority. Is that correct? Well, not outspoken atheists, no, but uh, well, people are not very religious. So, so uh, outspoken uh, atheists, uh, I don't know. We, we used to talk about the humanists in in, in Sweden. They are they're not very uh, big. There are a couple of thousand active members, um, pretty militant. Um, well. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say that 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 people are um, outspoken atheists, but uh, they don't care about religion. I would say that they are, well, yeah, indifferent. I mean, I, I suspect it may yeah. not be dissimilar to the United Kingdom, where religion, for the majority, plays a very much a background mm. part. And well, maybe you, they will you, go to church for a wedding or a funeral, but otherwise, not. Yeah, but you 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 will uh, probably get two different uh, views depending on if you look at the uh, official. Uh, well, you get an official official impression looking at the media, what what journalists uh, write about religion. It's very very uh, indifferent to religion, but uh, people um, uh, grassroots. They, of course, they just like you and me, they think about, they have questions, they are, well, man is religious. We have religious uh, questions, thoughts, of course. Um, I, I, I used to, you know, talk to all kinds of people from the lowest, <laughs> talking class now from the lowest to the highest, and uh, 
I like to talk to regular, average people, uh, getting, uh, getting real with them. You know, that's my initials too. Roll thing, Lampa, that's R-I-L. It's pronounced real. No. <laughs> so, yes, and getting and real. Were, uh, yeah. when, <coughs> excuse me, when these, um, uh, this video is subsequently posted on YouTube, we'll include whatever uh, links you like, including um, your website and, and so forth. Um, to what extent are your particular personal views uh, representative of the average theist in Sweden? I, um, I, I'm, I'm very biblically oriented. That means if you ask about my beliefs, my religion, my, my what do I belong to, well, I would say Christ. Uh, I mean, the basis for Christian faith is the Bible. Without the Bible, what do we have? Your, my opinion, my dreams, my uh, hallucinations, whatever. Yeah, the God delusion. <laughs> yeah, but well, let's um, let's go into a bit. Let's put some meat on the bones then, um, mm -hmm. and, and find out um, exactly what you do believe. Um, I've got a few questions. Um, feel free to expand on them as much as you would like. Yeah. Uh, for example, my first one is: um, How old do you think the Earth is? I think it's uh, less than 10,000 years, yes. And um, obviously, when you say that um, you, you starting point is Christ and the Bible, the stories in the Bible, um, just a couple to go through to, to see where we are, do you, for example, uh, believe in a literal uh, Garden of Eden and an Adam and an Eve? I do believe in a literal garden and Adam and Eve, uh, and uh, I have a comment on this starting from the Bible. It should be that way, yes, starting from what God said. And the question is, did he really say? <laughs> you know, the snake <laughs> was questioning, did God really say? Um, uh, but uh, my starting point was, I hadn't really thought about these issues from, from you know, I, I was born in a Christian home, uh, in a loving, uh, I have loving parents, uh, very good in teaching, but these creation evolution issues, they, they were not uh, very, well, they were not very well known in the 60s and 70s. They were not. You know, uh, this, um, what's his name, Henry Morris, he started this uh, so-called modern creationist movement the year I was born, 1961. So, yeah, and uh, so I, uh, when I, when I had uh, a whole bunch of own kids, I'm a father of seven, I started to thinking about this, these things, and um, like everyone else, I, I was thinking, oh, well, it could have had taken time, blah, 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 but I had, I had not thought of it, you know, I had, so I didn't have this starting point, that's, that's what I wanted to to say. But so obviously something I, happened yeah, that changed the, I, I, your I just view. learned some more, more um, uh, well, what, what is known about these things, then I, yeah, started to have opinions. <laughs> okay. So again, just looking at the Bible, so you, you accept the Adam and Eve account, uh, Garden of Eden, um, presumably then you accept Noah's flood? Yes. Yes, I do. Literally? Literally. Yes, those two things are very important to me, and uh, uh, that's according to the text, to the to the Bible. I know that you know. I very recently, only a few days, I debated another Christian about does the Bible teach this? No, he didn't think so, and he referred to uh, this and that, and I answered, you know, the Bi I, uh, There's a good thing with atheists; they have this starting point. If we are to uh, Consider the Bible at all, it must at least be internally consistent. Applaud to that. Well, most atheists I've, I've discussed with, they have this starting point. They uh, expect the Bible to be internally consistent. And from that starting point, yes, the Bible teaches uh, uh, Adam and Eve and Noah Flood as historical facts. Yes, we can do go you, into detail about that. So, do you maintain that the Bible is uh, consistent and doesn't contain contradictions? 
I maintain it is consistent. Yes, uh, it, you know, the Bible is about. The, we are into the uh, belief. Um, what do you say? Uh, when you talk about business, we are into some some yeah belief business, <laughs> faith business. Okay, well, trustworthiness must be the basis for 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 faith for trust. Yeah, of course. Okay, well. Um Samuel, thank you for being patiently sitting there. Uh, let, me, let me come to you. Um, perhaps you'd just like to tell us a little bit about yourself as well and what, what work you do. And uh, I know in particular you've got um, quite an interesting uh, qualification. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I studied uh, biotechnology. It's an engineering program, actually, but quite broad uh, science. Yeah, broad, different science field like biology and chemistry and so on. And also a bit technology, and maths, and so on, physics. And in and, general, uh, oh, sorry, do carry on. I thought you. Yeah, I, I, that's it. So um, and then, th this I find quite interesting because presumably um, both you and your father uh, reject the um, Darwinian theory of evolution. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, I don't know whether I want to start uh, going down that route just yet. Perhaps. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll just remind people that if you would like to join the uh, show um, uh, or ask any questions, do send a Skype contact request um, to Magic Sandwich Show, all one word. Uh, include in that, please, the gist of the topic or question that you would like to ask. Otherwise, your request uh, unfortunately will be ignored. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to go to Concordance next to see where Concordance wants to pick up on. So, <clears throat> as a general principle, if the Bible says one thing, and the evidence of science and reason and um, what's documented about the natural world says another thing, if you find those two things in tension, which one do you give primacy to? Okay. This is open to, to Rolf or Sam. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, it's... Uh, it's a very good question. That's that's the question every thinking person actually. Yeah, that's 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 the issue. Uh, now I don't see the conflict. Uh, uh, I haven't seen it yet because uh, I have seen conflict in opinions, but looking at the facts, I don't have the 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 problem because, okay. Uh, uh, I I I, st I have a starting point. Uh, God created. Uh, he inspired the word. He he let his servants uh, say important things about history, about uh, um, yeah the physical world. And when they do speak, uh, not only in poems or so, they 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 actually must be correct about uh, about reality. Yes, of course. And uh, I don't see I don't see the conflict, but and if you take any example, I would show you why and 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 why it seemingly is a conflict. Uh, it's proposed as a conflict while not being a conflict, or we just interpret the facts in different ways. I mean, look at the um, uh, environmental, the climate de debate. The same facts to to. Um, what do you what do you call them? Two parties, <laughs> you know. They interpret the facts, you know, the facts, uh, in different ways. And sometimes even the facts are not presented very well. You you have selective facts too, you know. Sometimes you don't uh, promote, um, uh, uh, you know, presenting the facts that also goes against. Um, a certain interpretation, but let's not, uh, in general terms, be too complicated now. But, but no, I, I don't have a conflict with reality uh, in in uh, in uh, in my belief. No, I don't, and I and I'm prepared to to uh, yeah defend my position. Hmm? Well, I mean, clearly the scientists will will largely disagree with you. That there are always dissenting opinions. There's dissenting opinions on whether or not uh, aliens are currently visiting us, or mm -hmm. uh, President George Bush was a, a reptilian alien from, from far, far away. How do you evaluate claims about the natural world 
that most people would say are in conflict. For example, the idea of uh, the supernatural, the idea of uh, humans being created literally from dust, uh, from dirt, uh, just a few thousand years ago, uh, that, that doesn't even get us to, say, the time of the pyramids or the time of uh, archaeological finds of human populations. The time that you're saying that, that life began is a time when archaeologists are finding evidence of human habitation that, that bears no resemblance uh, to what you're, you're asserting. Okay. So how, how when, when confronted with, let's say, the world scientific community's perspective on these things, you're obviously representing an enormously small minority uh, of viewpoints among the professionals that study the field. How, yeah. how do you resolve that? Why, why is okay, it that yeah. the Bible has the primacy? Yeah. We have to go down to the facts. I mean, you could as well. You, you said what the uh, world scientists, their opinion. Well, ask, ask me about the not, Catholic not opinion. priest's opinion. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about opinions. Uh, you could as well ask me, what, what about the Catholic priest's opinion about the Eucharist? We, we, uh, we don't agree. Okay. What, what's your opinion well, of what two plus two equals? Uh, well, that's four. No, well, is uh, that don't, your opinion? Don't, don't what, jump what about too far. We have to go. Five. No, we have to go back to the facts. It's completely irrelevant what what they uh, the scientists thought about sun going up in the mornings a couple of hundred of years ago. We have to go to the facts. Does it go up or? Is the explanation something else? Okay, we could. You, you mention our, our archaeologist. Uh, you ask an ar archaeologist about the Exodus case. That's interesting because it's been uh, recently. Uh, 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 it's a, it's a, a current theme for me. Uh, it's simple. You go to the Sinai Peninsula and look for evidence. And the, the, the places that has been suggested to be the candidates for what took place. Well, you don't find any. You go to all the places, you don't find any. And why? You know, no, we are down to the facts. We are looking at the facts. And the reason why is, you have heard of uh, Tsar Constantine. His wife, Helena, went there in 350-something, pointed out the biblical places and said, it's here, and that place is there, and that place is there. In reality, if you look at the facts, what the Bible says about these events, it said, go to um, uh, Mount Sinai, which is in uh, Median's land. Okay, look at where Median is today. It's in Saudi Arabia. Look at where they went. I can show you on Google Maps where they went over uh, the Aqua Bay. Exactly the place. It's 2,000 meters deep. I can hear you now. I don't know why, why the sound is... Yeah, so let's, let's pick a simpler yeah. example, but, Rolf, yeah, if but, we can. But, but this it's, is getting it, no, far in, in no, history. No, but the point, you know, you set up a question which was rigged. You were loading the dice. I am telling you, go back to the facts and see for yourself. Well, then it's a different story. You know, uh, then I have all the, the uh, Christian, the, all the religious maps against me. But look at reality, look at the facts, and you so, see uh, what Rolf, just I so see. I can understand what you're saying. Are you saying that the route taken out of Egypt, as described in the Bible, is not accurate? Uh, described by whom? Well, in Exodus. In Exodus, it's correct. I can show you the places. On Google Maps. Well, I don't think it had anything to do with Mount Sinai, did it? Uh, oh, yes. Mount Sinai is in Median and in Saudi Arabia today, not on the Sinai Peninsula. It's like, you know, uh, they're looking at the wrong place and then they find no evidence. And then they call it uh, fairy tales, okay? So that's how the facts differ from what people thought for 2,000 years. Did you I know mean, that the, the, it was Helena point, that pointed this, out the places? <laughs> just sticking on um, the Exodus account, I mean, okay. there's no doubt um, that they left Egypt, is there? I mean, that's quite clear in the Bible. It's quite clear, yeah, it's clear text. Right. But 
what archaeological archae archaeological evidence has been found for the them being in Egypt in the first place? I mean, it doesn't matter which route they took. That's your starting point. What's your okay. evidence for that? Okay, uh, uh, I can tell you something okay. about it. Um, um, at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, those who uh, appoint this um, uh, Nobel Prize in Medicine, there's a professor, professor Lennart Miller. He wrote a book, I'll show you, Exodus Case, the Exodus Case. As a loyal, you understand why he chose this title, the Exodus Case. Look it up. With pictures. Go and see all the facts. Okay, he, is not the, uh, he didn't find out everything. He checked it up, what many, many others have found out, and he checked them himself. And he changes the case. That's what I'm saying. Look at the facts. Okay, well, so, I think wants let, to let me pick a, a very simple, yeah, a very simple scientific case. Okay. The stars, the light yep. from the stars is is reaching us now from stars that are more than ten thousand light years away. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So, were the was the light created already en route? No. Nope. Between one star and another. Well, I don't know, uh, of course, and you don't know either, but isn't very tasteful to think that God created a, a, a fake universe from start, okay? So, uh, uh, we creationists, we don't believe that he created the light, you know, the, the impression of light. But what do we know about light? For example, Einstein, he uh, knew one thing, that the speed of life is a two-way uh, concept. concept. No, it's the two-way speed of light. You have never, no, look at this, you have never confirmed the one-way speed of light. And Einstein himself was aware of this, but it was good enough for him to go for the two-way speed. But he understood that you have a one-way speed too. What do we know about it? We don't. That's one question that is open. Yeah? And um, uh, what do we know about time? Because we talk about distance. You were into distance. It's not about time when we talk about light years. It's a, it's a distant measurement, okay? But time, if time is relative, what about distance? And so on, and so on. Uh, the, fact, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, you have many, many problems are, are uh, caused by the presumption, uh, the, uh, you know, the presumption here that, that what we see is light that has taken so many years to, 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 to come to us. And, and uh, uh, well, there are many, many, many uh, problems, known, well-known problems. Uh, for example, the, the galaxies, uh, star arms, why didn't they get wind up? Um, uh, there's a lot about stars, lots of problems. Uh, they are not, it is not only that they are solved, they contradict what we think about this physics. Um, uh, and, and for example, uh, it, it, it presents uh, giving a, uh, an impression that we know so much about astronomy. But we're talking about dark mat matter, dark energy, and the correct word for that is, okay, 70% of all matter in, in the universe uh, isn't there, which should be there, because gravity, it, it's not in balance with gravity, okay? So, uh, in, in, in everyday talk, 70% of what should be there isn't there. So it's the 70% unknown, what we don't know we talk about when we talk about dark matter and dark energy. But why don't we present it as such? Because the model, look, the model doesn't work. It's not in balance. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. That has nothing to do with creationism. That is the unknown. What, what I'd like to point out, Rolf, is that everything you're talking about no, but you, it is starting from the conclusion that the Bible must be right, and then finding the pieces, proposing mechanisms that exactly are yet unknown. Exactly wrong. You know, that, I answered your question. Your problem with the distant starlight problem, which uh, that's how it's mm -hmm. dubbed, 
it is starting from a model, a cosmology, which doesn't work. <laughs> so, you know, and that's it, that's a very convenient thing. Now, why did you no. arrive at the fact that that cosmology didn't work? What, well, what was it? I mean, obviously, you don't have uh, the background. I can give in you a third. I can give you. I can give you thirty examples of secular cosmologists that don't agree with this model because they see the problem which everyone sees, every physicist knows of these problems and they have different models and they don't have this distant starlight problem. I'm not talking about so creation. What piece of evidence made you decide that the current model is inappropriate? What, what specific piece of evidence was it that led you to conclude that the current models are wrong? Well, what, what many, empirical observations? Yeah, many lack of evidence for claims. Ah. For instance, well, well yeah, lack so of evidence for claims. You know, if you claim that evidence. something is true, if you claim that something is true, and you don't have uh, uh, and pretend to make it look like it's it's proven and it's not, well, that's bad. If I don't claim I have evidence, well, and that that's not that bad, okay? For instance, uh, we, we can, we can, we can um, claim that we know how stars form, but we don't know how star, stars formed. Well, it is you not you may not know, but there are people who understand no, the no, process no, quite well. No, absolutely not. I have tried them all. You know, I'm talking to, to several uh, um, astrophysicists. They claim that they know, and I said, okay, explain it. And they try to explain it, and I show that they don't know. We, we don't have, perhaps don't have time here to go into those details. Uh, yeah, I can defend that when we take our time, perhaps. Uh, well, uh, we, we, only have, we only have two hours, Rolf, and no. uh, Samuel again has been sitting I, patiently. I suspect so. you're being a little dishonest, Rolf. I, I think, no, 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 no. I, no? I, no wait, wait for me to finish for a moment. <laughs> I believe that you're starting with the presumption that what is written in the Bible is more telling or more indicative of whether or not our conclusions. It is the litmus test to use. Uh, okay, you, you have the, the benefit of term. asking me and the answer is no. I told you. I've seen claims which, uh, uh, which I can prove is false. That, uh, and we, we can get I back to that. I propose that you would publish that in a reputable journal. With the proper background. Well, I'll tell you, there are a lot of people out okay, there. Okay, but that's the political have, side of it again. That have ideas that, uh, you know, the pyramids, for example, were built by aliens. Oh. We, we don't take those things seriously because they tend to fall apart. And the people who try to present them, present them in the popular press, in their own personal newsletter type of format. But they don't undergo the rigorous testing of peer review by qualified scientists. Now, it could be that you don't understand current theories. It could be that a cosmologist is unable to explain these things to you uh, in a way that you can comprehend. But... I'm a little less persuaded by someone who has deep religious beliefs that they believe supersede the empirical observations made by qualified scientists. So my question to you, if, if you do, and you've, you've said as much, Rolf, that you, you believe in having to prove your case. You believe that evidence has to come first. It has to be the, uh, the first motivating factor. What evidence led you to believe uh, in, in a Noah's Ark, in, in the uh, containment within a single boat of all known species, uh, and the, the survival of those animals, and then their eventual redistribution around the earth, so that the penguins ended up uh, where they are and where, you know, horses ended I can up where give they you, are. I can give you an, uh, a comparable answer, you know following two lines at the same time, so you understand what I mean when you lack the evidence for your claims, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, for the reason that someone actually observated it and told me, okay? So now, uh, of course, you, you, could, you could ask, uh, can, can, can someone disprove it? Well, many, many claims, but let me, uh, let me give you an example why I believe in that. There was a... Um, uh, I can give you the facts later. There was a guy, he, he, he um, took a sample from, a, uh, from an island, from a mountain, sent to the lab and asked, how old is this piece of rock? 
Okay, uh, the answer came long short, uh, long story, uh, story short, it's 20 million years old, no, 200 million years old, doesn't really matter. And, uh, well, he knew uh, it was formed, it was a volcanic island formed in 1957, the 23rd of October. Okay, the eyewitness is more trustworthy. So who was the eyewitness to Noah's Ark? Why is that? Because you, you infer. Who, who, who was you, the eyewitness to Noah's Ark? Built on theories, assuming things, and indirectly you conclude that it's this and that old. Okay. Did, did Noah write Genesis? Was, was he the eyewitness? Well, he was the eyewitness. Was the eyewitness? He has told his story. It wasn't a very pleasant story. He was uh, caught drunk and he was, uh, oh, it wasn't only, you know, a pleasant I think, story. I think Concordance's point was that um, the only person that could have written Genesis was Noah or his descendants, and they weren't eyewitnesses. Weren't they eyewitnesses to what they were experiences? Uh, to the what? flood, but not to the creation, no. No, but uh, there is textual evidence that he could have had... Uh, uh, you know, uh, written sources for, for the uh, creation account, or uh, what, do you, what do you say, the mouth tradition? Uh, we don't know oral, which. Oral tradition. Uh, yeah, oral tradition. Otherwise known as hearsay. But, but there is also... Um, yeah, I mean, all are... the evidence shows that the, 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 the Old Testament was not based on written writings that existed, and I believe it's uh, 1200 B.C., is is the oldest possible author date for any of the books of uh, the Old Testament. I think you're being far too generous. I think the Dead Sea Scrolls are the oldest accepted works, and they're about no more than 300 uh, BC. So you know, it's it's it doesn't add up with your own chronology. No one was there who who wrote down a written account uh, of well, the Garden well, of Eden. So, we so only you're, you're have basing this on hearsay. <laughs> It's interesting that, that you do uh, set a very high standard, and, and you feel, I think, that the scientific evidence, for example, your, your uh, volcanic extruded before, sample. Before you continue, wear, please, well, hey, wait, please, wait, wrong, please, wrong, please, wrong, please. We need to uh, follow some rules. If you, uh, you know, I have beliefs. I can't prove everything in a scientific way because you can't prove history in, in the same way. But that's okay? the point, though, isn't it, Rob? If you haven't got evidence and you are accepting it as beliefs, it ends no, there, but there is, it? It is forensic evidence too. If if going into that, but I was going to say, okay, you come in and uh, disqualify history without no evidence either. I disqualify the no. written words of of a large cultural group that are based on oral traditions passed down several thousand years and then codified. I, I doubt that's a very good science textbook. Uh, likewise, I doubt the veracity of uh, the Bhagavad Gita. I doubt the veracity of a number of uh, sort of oral traditions. The, I doubt that there was actually a spider named, uh, was it Nancy? Uh, in the Jamaican tradition. All of these are sort of the folk legends, the creation myths of their people. I don't take any of them as literal. I take them as part of the culture and tradition of that culture. Now, you're saying that all of the cultural traditions, all of the folk legends of your own personal culture are literally true. That's an extraordinary claim and should require extraordinary evidence. You've yes. shown me that you value empirical evidence over the account of, say, someone's opinion or yeah. someone's personal beliefs. Yeah. What I'm asking you for is you, you devoutly, I believe, uh, accept that there was a man named Noah who put all of the animals in the world, uh, in, or two of each animal in the world, into a boat where they survived for months at a time. Yeah. And then eventually, but, but don't, don't, you, the don't use only so rhetoric here. Evidence. You can also ask me what I believe. I don't believe that they put all the now living uh, species into the ark. Of course not. And, that, and you don't have to believe what that to believe. Well, that's an interesting point, and I think that might be a good segue into um, yeah. moving it on. Um, not all of the species were taken onto the ark. Um, so, are you able to say which ones were and which ones were not? And um, 
dinosaurs. What, what sort of percentage? Uh, and if you are uh, saying that species have developed, I presume, over what four ish thousand years since coming off the ark, um, yeah. isn't that an acceptance of uh, evolution? Well, uh, first of all, dinosaurs were on the ark, yes. Many animals are on extinct. You can go to Charles Easel's uh, ca uh, cathedral in England and look at how they depicted living, fighting dinosaurs, sauropods. How did they know what they looked like in motion with flesh on? Okay, go to China. That's a dinosaur culture. Dinosaur and man living together. Well, we call them whatever dragons today, but anyway. Uh, the next question, the species, which ones were on the ark? Well, we talk about uh, uh, families, classes, blah, 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 and they are able to form, um, uh, we call it microevolution, the, the, the va variation. Uh, there are many mechanisms causing uh, speciation, so I believe in speciation, but only the reduction from uh, uh, from an uh, ark animal, you know, cat cat animals, uh, dog animals, all the the cats, foxes, uh, no, uh, foxes, shackles, well, whatever the the dogs, they are dog animals, horse animals, um, you know, and so on, uh, and they were on the ark. So the question and, and all of this speciation that you refer to uh, has taken place in four thousand years. Uh, yeah. For, for th well, we don't know exactly what number were on the ark, but uh, quite a few. But uh, if, well, if we look at this what, is my point. if you what, don't know, Rob, how can you assert any claim about what was on the ark? Well, no, it, it, we, we can, uh, you know, like in forensic, uh, 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 what do you say, criminology, you look what is possible. You can't claim that you know, but it, it, what was possible, and people have tried to look, what, what, uh, what, what is the least number of animals that would, had to be on the ark, you know, to, to, okay, to get us, all the groups of animals, is, and how would they fit in, what about the food, how could they make it for so long, and there's no problem, there would be one third of the space left over for the humans that were meant to be on the ark, to be saved. Okay. Yep. But uh, I mean, you can look at known known classifications and and see. Uh, I mean, we we think that we know who is the fore forefather of those dogs and foxes and this and that. What what we do know that a dog and a cat cannot interbreed. And okay, gonna, uh, also, subspecies of groups cannot interbreed, by, but, but for different reasons. You know, we, we know something about genetics today, and so on, and so on. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, going to, I'm going to insist that we slightly change the topic, because I want to bring Samuel in. Um, and uh, this is a point that I had intended to raise earlier on. Um, just to remind people before I go to Samuel that uh, you can join us um, by sending a Skype contact request to Magic Sandwich Show. Someone has just asked me um, by uh, PM in uh, Blog TV uh, whether they can post a question there to be read out rather than calling in. Yes, of course you can. Uh, no problem with that. Um, Samuel, you've been very quiet and very patient, and I uh, appreciate that. Um, as I say, I want to change the um, tax slightly. What I want to ask you about, Samuel, if that's all right, is um, describe to me the characteristics of the god that you believe in. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, you have you have the Bible, and, and he's described there through. First, he. I mean, you you can you, maybe you can look at the end where people thank God for different things, and and in their revelations, and you see that they will be thanking him for that he created us, so that we are alive, and that he saved us. Um, it's not quite what I'm getting at. I mean, tell me, is he a material entity? No, it says God is spirit. So it's a spiritual and, entity. It says and, where? Well, wait, it says where? In the Bible. Uh, I can look it up if you want. 
Yeah. Well, I, I have to say that I remember certain passages from the Bible, and in Genesis itself, uh, fairly early on, um, we hear about God walking around the Garden of Eden, which would uh, indicate, and, and shouting out to um, Adam, that would indicate that he's not just spiritual, that would surely indicate that he was material. Well, we see, I mean, already in Jesus we see that God has taken hu human form, he's a spirit can, can, can... So he's a shift changer, he, he can change from spiritual to physical. He, the, the entity of God is spirit. It says clearly, yeah, there's a statement, God is spirit. But That but doesn't I mean, mean anything. What is the entity? Is it spirit or is he, as I said, a physical entity? No, he's not. No. He's not physical, but he no. can be if he wants to be. He, well, um, you can I mean, change the question halfway. If he is what he absolutely is, no, he's, he's spirit. Can he also have materialistic form? Yes. That doesn't change his essence, okay? You I mean, you can have a medium. It. Well, I'm not sure I understand because I don't know the word okay, like essence. Does it, does it have a paper uh, package? No, milk is something else. Well, so it doesn't have paper package around it. Uh, I didn't say that. Milk is liquid, but it can have also a paper package wrapped around it, okay? So? Okay. That's about the physical. So. All right. Does um, and, and um, obviously the having created everything, there were certain occasions, as referred to in the Bible, where God uh, interfered directly. Um, so he obviously, I presume, in your view, has an ability to interfere with life and the workings of physics. Indeed. I mean, it says that he created through his words. And uh, in the information age, we know quite a bit about that. I mean, if we create a computer program, the programmer has al always the ability. If he's made it up in a good way, he can, he can have a little control panel for himself where he changes the parameters or does whatever he wants. And that is true information going out into the system. And it's and all created by words. Also, the structure and behavior, it's all created by words. I have that experience. I made a small universe. That's what I did. ERP system. <laughs> you, you are a universe. god, then. Well, You're in a, a sense, of that yes. I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know something about the problems involved, anyway, uh, in a very small scale. But I know something about the problems involved, and I understand what, what you know. Someone is saying, but through his word, yes, I know. Through information, that's the only way. That's the only solution. Long before we got the idea, even, he said he created through words. Now we create things through words and I can command a, uh, a system to through words and by words that system in turn can create buildings, move uh, mountains. Yes, we can also do things only through information, through words. And okay, biologically well, we topic. are I, I words. I haven't finished yet, Rolf, if, yep. you, if okay. you don't mind. Huh? I want to go back to Samuel uh, or That's good. both of you. Um, does your God uh, hear prayer? Sure. Does he answer prayer? Um, that is dependent. He put up some criteria uh, what in the Bible. criteria? Uh, there were two different criteria. He, he told, whatever you pray in my name, um, you will have. And I, I want, it's important to understand what God's name is. We know that in ancient cultures, name were describing um, the characteristics of a person. So when we pray according to his how he is as a person, it's no problem. We can have it. Uh, we just need to uh, kind of be honest that that we or show him the show him the cred that we ask really ask him. We trust in in him to give us that. So no as long as you do it in his name, he will answer the prayer. Yeah, if you understand what in his name means. And Many you, do, people, you do understand what in his name does mean, yeah? I think so. I'm, I'm quite Has sure he ever, I do. Have you ever prayed and your prayer not been answered? I guess it has happened. I mean... Uh, so you either God doesn't answer all prayer or you don't know what in God's name means. Or his time schedule. 
Ah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good no, yeah, that. yeah. Get out. You can course. get away with Concordance. it, of course, but don't ask for a Mercedes and don't say, Why not? and I want it now. <laughs> Why Don't not? Do it. Well, what about something no. good like? Well, uh, I can uh, I can I give you the answer. I can give you. I I got a question. Why not? Because I have asked for many things uh, already as a young man. I asked for. Uh, I'm not going to give you the exact example right now, but I asked for things that I know. I'm 51 now. I have seen that it took him 30 years to answer. He had to show me this and that. You know, when you understand the premises, then you can get the conclusion. His disciples asked Jesus, okay, if Jesus were God, why didn't he answer? No, you can't bear it yet. He said, as of yet, I don't know how you put it in English. You can't bear it. You can't have every answer directly. You know, I have seven small children. They ask me about things that hmm, I, I prefer to answer when they are, you know, like 18, 19 or so, you know things, family-friendly questions <laughs> only before 18 and, and so on. You can't give every answer before you have the ability to understand what, what the answer is really, what the answer really is. So are you saying that God's answers are indistinguishable from non-God's answers? Do, do you understand what I mean? How, how would you distinguish by your prayer, whether no, but or not I can God give you was an example effective answer of as to why He don't always answer directly. Well, no, no. Then if there were no God, how would how would you prove in a universe in which no God exists existed? Let's just hypothetical. What would prayer do in a universe where God didn't exist? What would be the effect of that prayer? Sometimes the thing would come true if the thing you were asking for was, if you will, yes. going to happen anyway. Correct? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, if that's, there's that's a universe it. where there was a God, and it only happened sometimes because yeah. God willed it, yeah. because it was part of his ineffable plan, then we have now a God that is indistinguishable from a non-God. Yeah. There's no way to put any kind of empirical test on the criteria that prayer has some tangible effect, some measurable effect. Okay, well, and you've already said to me, Rolf, that you value evidence. You value objective evidence. Yeah. And yet here okay, we the have Bible a gives an prayer. example of what you're asking for. for. First of all, if you're a small kid and your, your father is God. Okay, we can have an analogy here. Mm -hmm. Not everything you ask of your father is subject to empirical test in, in the scientific way, okay? Because you have needs, you have, you know, things, uh, and some things are going to happen whether you ask for it or not, both good and bad. That's true. Now, an example in the Bible of, can you test God? Well, yes, you can if it's according to God's plan and His will, as Samuel was into. <laughs> I give you an example, a very smart one. You heard of Gideon? Uh, early in his life, he got a calling. You're going to be... Uh, I choose you to be a person who is going to help your people when they are in trouble, in deep need. Okay, the day came, troubles arise, enemies all around, and Gideon asked God, is the time now? Is it really you? Perhaps I'm, 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 I'm just making it up. I have a rich imagination. I want you to show, to confirm that I'm called to, to save my people. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just a Mr. Nobody bumming around in the bush. So he put, a, a, what is it called, from, from a sheet, the skin? On the ground, you have heard, read this story. Put it on the ground and he said, if the skin is wet but the the ground around it is dry in the morning, then I believe uh, that's a sign from you. Okay, so he asked for that and God didn't complain and he gave him the answer. Okay, the skin was wet but not the ground around. But then again, I mean being scientifically minded, how are you going to exclude chance? And he was, he, he did the smartest thing that you can do. So you make a long story short, he said, invert the thing. Make the ground wet and the skin dry. Then I have excluded every possibility of something, uh, uh, you know, natural yeah, being there's involved. No other way okay, so he okay, so he dry, got the no, Okay, he's <laughs> got, he got the answer in the smartest way that you can test something. 
It was a mathematician that, that uh, actually noted this inversion. Okay, now, you ask, is it possible to test the biblical God? Well, if it's important enough, yes, please do. Don't jump down the cliff or do something stupid. Don't follow every idea you have, because what if you're mad? We, have, we both have the same problem. What if I'm mad? We need evidence from the outside. So, yes? Well, my question to you again okay. is, are there any tests which in modern times, with scientific confirmation, there has been an explanation, or I'm sorry, a, a phenomenon for which no explanation other than magic. And let's be very clear that what you're talking about is divine, God-created, God magical wand no, waving. No, he's part of reality. So, so all of his magic. powers are natural nothing, powers. But They're indistinguishable from phenomena in the natural world. Is that what you're saying? So everything that God does has a natural explanation as well. Uh, well, I, I don't understand the question there because... Uh, I, I mean, a very simple thing. Can, can he make a round square? Why, why, if I pray for a round square, will not one never appear? Why well, do none could, of the could miracles... You, um, could you, could you prove stand that? Up to screw hey, look, why why if don't he the could, miracles stand up to screw me? That's, slow, slow that's down. my slow, don't go around. Hey, if God could make a round square, you couldn't confirm it. So why ask the question? Is the question or the answer stupid? You know, you need to ask valid question. Can he lift a stone which is so heavy so he can't lift it or something? You know, I don't remember. You know, you I'm have to ask logically valid question. Right? It always Sorry. turns out that whatever the miracle is, it's, uh, you know, it's sewer seeping through the porous rock of the uh, uh, altar. It's, it, there's always some easy natural explanation. But people are using their confirmation bias. They're, they're blinding themselves to any explanation. They're surprised by something or they're mm. confused by something. Okay. And so in that place of uncertainty mm. or surprise, they place some divine being who is not surprised, who is not uncertain. Uh, and so the, they, they the create in their own mind this, this sort of crack and then they, they wedge God into it. They wedge their there's un a difference. unknownness. They, yeah, there's they, well, a I'm difference. keen to hear from yes. Samuel because he's been very much quieter than you. If it's that, but that's yeah. all right. Samuel. Yeah, I was, I mean, I'm thinking about what is the assumption here. I mean, the, the role of prayer in the Bible isn't most of the times that my, my personal prayer to God should be an evidence to other people. There are some occasions, for example, when Elijah was praying about for fire from the from the heavens for, for the people staying there. We cannot maybe confirm that very well right now, but except from that, it's it's uh, that's not the role of prayer. So you're coming with that assumption and just attacking by, by having that that assumption. So I see. Right, well, I, 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 I don't see except to a degree, I think what you're saying, namely that you shouldn't be too selfish in your prayers. Have you ever prayed for world peace? I'm not sure about what I pray, pray well, for. Well, do been, you I've accept that many, peace. many millions of people, if not billions, have prayed for world peace? And to various uh, deities uh, throughout history. Uh, what, what, I'm getting to, what I'm getting point, to, DPR. Obviously, we do not have world <laughs> peace. Why do you think that is? Is God powerless to give us world peace? You have to, I, I mean, if you, for example, if you, the Bible, it tells some, some facts about God, and it also shows by example. So you can show, you can, uh, you can learn a lot about what, what, what right. is going well, on. Let's, let's see if we can find out what your God, this is what I was asking you about before. Your God is all loving, yes? Sure, but, but another question. Yes, all right. And secondly, your God doesn't like seeing unnecessary suffering, yes? Not on what is necessary then? You have many assumptions here. For example, world peace. To what extent? Ask of Churchill. No, he didn't want peace. He was the only smart guy. Your God he knew he want had peace. to fight is for that freedom. What you're saying? <laughs> so okay. But, but I, I have a question. Yeah. Did yeah. God leave any responsibility to man? 
Well, it, there's no in question Bible, asking no. me about God because I don't believe in God. You are the one who believes in God, and I'm no, trying to have, understand have... the nature of the entity that you believe in. Is your yep. God, and I'll run through them quickly, right? All powerful, I think you're going to say yes. Can he, if he wanted to, could he introduce world peace? Lack Is everything of suffering? in context? Then, yes, I think you're going to have to agree with that. Thirdly, you're then faced with the problem of why he does not do that. Is that a problem when there is a context? He's not alone. He created us for a purpose. What purpose? Now, for a purpose, yes. What purpose? To reflect his inner nature. That's, what, that's an idiom, Hebrew idiom, meaning reflecting someone's personality. It's like you see the little boy there. Oh, he's, exa he's behaving exactly like his dad. It's not about the outer um, uh, shape. It's about his behavior, personality. So God has human traits. God created us with the intent that we should reflect his way of thinking, his attitudes, you know, so and interact on you look with on, him. God can be a bigot, a homophobe, uh, a violent, psychopathic, uh, lunatic. He could all be, also be a woman, um, a man, no? he could be gay, he could no, be straight. He created us for a purpose. I, sorry, where are you we, going with this? Yeah. He created us for a purpose which was not not fulfill that purpose. You know, we have we have all these problems in in the Bible. Cain was the first one. He did not reflect God's purpose. Why but his he? calling where 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 uh, God didn't uh, abandon his calling. His he told Cain he had murdered his brother. So he started to to you know uh, um, um, complain. Oh, now everyone is free to kill me when I blah 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 blah. And thought sorry for himself. No, God went up to Cain and said, No, I'm going to protect you. But you were supposed to rule over sin. He gives you responsibility. He gives you, uh, he gives you something to take responsibility over. He does not take away your responsibility. He does not make you into a robot. So here we are down on the on the you know the 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 core problem. You know, uh, uh, we are often accused of being you know like puppies having no own will. This is exactly what we have. But would you please? Make use of your freedom and don't do everything, every, you know, according to every thought that comes by. Well, you, you should rule you over thereof, sin. I'm, I'm okay. sorry if I could just pause you there. You mentioned there of um, the issue of free will, which is um, one we've sort of like touched <laughs> upon a couple of times on the show, but happens to be um, the issue.